Before I start this episode of Greatness of Wrestling, I had this random thought yesterday, WWE 2K19 million dollar challenge, hmm. Imagine for some reason I win against all the other players after months and months of anticipation I finally face AJ Styles and I'm finally facing this guy for million dollars on PlayStation 4. The match is going for like 20 minutes and I lose. Jesus, we a million dollars. Fuck, man! I could, I could buy a house with that. I could buy a house, a car, and live the rest of my life without even working for the rest of my life. Fuck, million. Fuck. Whoever is going to face AJ Styles in that million dollar challenge, good luck. You will either change your life or the rest of your life. Or you'll ruin it. So, yeah, good luck with that. Welcome to the Greatest Human Wrestling History. Welcome to another edition of Greatness of Wrestling. And today I have a very weird reason why, another reason basically, why Big Cass actually got released from WWE. Take it with a grain of salt. We don't know if it's true or not, but I'm gonna tell you that later. And it also includes Carmella, and this is actually his ex girlfriend but before that i want to talk about the undertaker wwe news the undertaker to team up with roman reigns and braun Strowman at madison square garden the pairing of roman reigns and the undertaker is quite odd because one would assume that there is unresolved business between the two wwe superstars remember how the undertaker took brock lesnar to task for months to on end because lesnar defeated him at wrestlemania 30 ending the streak whatever the case may be it's still a very strong unit and guaranteed to be a draw at madison Madison Square Garden. The event is advertised as being The Undertaker's return to Madison Square Garden after eight long years. From the looks of it, it'll be a victory for the baby faces. I don't really understand why there's so much hype behind it because I've seen it announced and people are going ape shit for Undertaker wrestling in Madison Square Garden while the reality is none of us actually will see that. We will see a couple of pictures. Probably, I think it won't be on WWE Network, so why would I actually give a damn? Why would I give a shit? Seriously. Okay, Undertaker is returning to Madison Square Garden. Great. Amazing. Will that affect any of us? No. However, there is a bit more news about The Undertaker and SummerSlam. Huge name rumored for WWE SummerSlam. Speculation on Elias' face turn. The following speculation comes from the WrestleVotes Twitter account regarding a possible Undertaker SummerSlam match. Texting with a source, The Undertaker has been presented with a story and match for SummerSlam. Source said him work in Madison Square Garden next month along with Australia in October should be a good sign for SummerSlam. I can add that idea is something Taker was pushing for at one point. So it does seem like The Undertaker is actually going to wrestle at SummerSlam and it does make a lot of sense if he's wrestling on these live tours on Australia I'm pretty goddamn sure WWE will put him on SummerSlam. When it comes to Undertaker wrestling on SummerSlam I don't really imagine who should it be you know Undertaker faced pretty much everyone that I want him to face except except one guy one guy whose name AJ Styles of SmackDown Live, the WWE Champion. That was the worst impression, <laughs> holy shit. I do think that AJ Styles, the Phenomenal versus the Phenom would be such a goddamn good decision by the WWE. Not only it's a marquee match, not only it's a Phenomenal one versus the Phenom, it's also, you know, AJ Styles is one of these guys who can have a good match with a sack of balls. Yes. And Undertaker is not in his prime anymore. So if there's anyone who could still have an amazing match with The Undertaker, it's definitely our boy AJ Styles. So that would be the best decision for me. Other than that, I don't really see any other marquee match because I do think that John Cena is going to be The Undertaker in the next WrestleMania. So maybe not right now. So I do believe he's going to wrestle at SummerSlam. 
Dave Meltzer's Wrestling Observer newsletter broke down the Seth Rollins vs. Elias money in the bank match and speculated on a possible face turn for Elias. Elias showed good intensity late, and this may have been his best match to date. Rollins won by reversing a cradle and held on to uh, Elias' pants to get the win. It was interesting Rollins won with a heel finish. Usually when you do this, it's because you want to build sympathy for the heel for a planned turn. Whether that's the case here, who knows, although Elias is obviously ending up at some point as a face. So, so this basically is just speculation, it's not news, but I, this is something I really want to talk about because when I first uh, heard this idea about uh, Elias being a babyface, it sounds not right, it sounds weird for me. Elias is a total heel, he's playing a guitar pretty much roasting everybody in the crowd, but then I thought about it, it could also work as a face. He could do the exact same thing to the heels. I do think it would work. For example, The Rock. I think The Rock's concerts actually were supposed to be heelish. Because I think in Ruthless Aggression era, he used to come out, sing these heelish songs about the crowd and Stone Cold Steve Austin. But once he actually returned to the WWE in 2011, he used to do the same crap on John Cena as a babyface. You know, pandering to the crowd and roasting a couple of... 30 year old virgins who are John Cena's fans. I miss The Rock. So I do actually believe that it would work, maybe not right now, but since I really want a couple of guys to turn heel, I do think to keep the dynamic of heels and faces, the, the equal number, I think, uh, for example, turn Balor heel and turn Elias face, I think that would work. For example, yeah, Bobby Roode, please turn Bobby Roode heel because I will never, ever, ever give a shit about Bobby Roode as a baby face. That's just 100%. So let's talk about Big Cass and his huge, gigantic ass. Still a great joke. What, what, what an amazing joke. Laugh. For a report from Wrestling News Co, the last straw for Big Cass in WWE was an incident in which he grabbed Carmella's arm, the Usos and Eric Rowan reportedly had to stop him. This was absolutely unacceptable behavior and I'm glad WWE took action. First of all, I gotta say all of this is allegedly because we don't know what actually happened but if this is true first of all he's a goddamn idiot second of all good riddance by the wwe and third of all who thought it's actually a good idea to put big gas and carmella on the same brand knowing that they recently broke up just recently i know that you should be professional but people have emotions you know shit happens with that all being said i'm also even a bigger fan of the usos and eric rowan right now when it comes to relationships i i do understand that in the heat of the moment people do stupid shit you know we cannot uh, treat big as some kind of monster he didn't punch her or anything he grabbed her arm we don't know how it actually happened did he did it aggressively or he just tried to get her attention or maybe whatever the case may be it could actually be exaggerated maybe it wasn't even serious but if it was he's a douchebag you know he deserves to be fired when it comes to relationships for me it's a very sensitive topic for some reason I really cannot stand people who put uh, their arms on their significant other in a serious matter. I'm not talking about playful shit. And I also can't stand people who cheat. Uh, for me, it's one of these things where, oh, I just wasted five years of your life. I also want to give you a shout out to all of you sexy beasts who actually found me on the Akinator. Yes, I am on the Akinator with multiple pictures. And you guys proved that I'm actually on this site. So shout out to every single one of you who actually tried to find me. Exclusive, WWE SmackDown announcers told not to reference NXT during Sanity debut. So basically what happened is that Sanity finally debuted on SmackDown Live. And what's shocking is that we didn't hear any NXT reference. No mention of them being the tag team champions, pretty much nothing absolutely nothing and i think a few months ago i got a question why the great one you don't watch nxt their takeovers are so amazing you should watch it every damn week and i said yes their takeovers are amazing but i will probably not watch it every week because here's the thing whatever happens in nxt it may, it may be great, amazing, once that certain superstar goes to the main roster none of that matters none of that matters it should 
it should matter, but in WWE's eyes, it's a whole different show. So how am I supposed to get excited about someone like Bo Dallas who is an NXT champion, goes up to the main roster, is a fucking job, or how am I supposed to get excited about Bobby Roode who is a NXT champion, one of the greatest heels in NXT history, comes to the main roster, one of the most boring motherfuckers I've ever seen in my entire life. And I also have the question, why wouldn't you mention NXT? Well, with actually mentioning it, you would boost NXT's ratings, more people would get into NXT, it's your goddamn show. WWE is associated with NXT, so by basically saying that Bobby Roode, a former NXT champion, you would make people watch NXT because it sounds like a big deal. Now what you're doing is pretty much ignoring everything that happened out here. Thank you for watching this video, if you want to support the series, always click that like button, leave a comment, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, all the links are in description below. Also, second channel, link is in description. The great one, peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure.